Welcome back, guys. Um, episode six, Alpha Lady Vinny Sess. Episode Josh. Josh. Yes, as you can see, it's a different setup. We're in Panama City, you know, right now in Florida um, for Arlie's uh, birthday trip and uh, no vacation trip, but we have a uh, plan. Today's episode, we're basically <laughs> going to talk about um, kind of a sensitive subject, but uh, it's about a wholesale deal uh, with a really motivated seller that uh, we lost. It was potential to make make a great sum of money, so uh, it's very... Uh, Sensitive still, but uh, we're in a better place so we can talk about it now. Yes, for sure. So, my heart still hurts a little bit, but we live, we learn. This deal actually, or lead, this person came actually through Dave um, as one of his projects, so maybe you want to start that. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell the, the story. Not the whole story. No, I'll tell the whole story. It's pretty simple. Um, no, no, no. So, I handle my own marketing, and I, I do uh, my marketing on different websites. Um, yeah. So, I got a lead from a lady that called me and said um, she uh, has a little house, she was renovating, but she needs to finish in about two weeks. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, she's like, yeah, it really needs to be done quick but good, so I can make that happen. So I go over there and I, I give her an estimate on all the costs it would take to, to get the house to the standards to basically sell it around the area, and um, she said, no, I can afford that. Um, I'm running out of money. I'm all. My, I'm already in my savings. So I said that's a perfect opportunity. Um, so I told her, I, I told her I'll buy it off your cash, and I close in two weeks. I mean that's what she does. So I learned from her. Okay, you're jumping. That's my side of the story. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So he told me about the lead, and um, he told me he's just trying to close because the parents have the had the house and the tenant trashed them, so they just want to get out of it. And my lead right there just went like ding ding ding. And I was like, Dave, this is great. Like, let me call the lady, see if she's interested in selling. So I called her and she said, No, I don't want to sell because I have a realtor that I work with all the time and I need to give her this so she can make money too because she gives me leads all the time, blah blah blah. So I said, Okay, what if I take care of you and your realtor, even though she's really not going to be doing much? And she said, oh, you can do that? And I said, yeah, of course, we can give her a 3% commission because it's just going to be her. And um, I can give you a price on the house, you know, whatever. And, you know, everybody's happy. She was super ecstatic. She said, yes. We talked on the phone. Um, this was like a two-bedroom or three-bedroom? Three bedroom, one bath. Three bedroom, one bath. Um, outskirts of Nashville. And um, the ARV or like the after repair value was about 185, 180. Mm -hmm. Um, she, there was like about $10,000 left of renovations to do the work and all the materials were there so the only thing that was missing was labor. And um, I asked her, or I told her a price of 128 At first she was like, oh okay, let me talk to my parents so she could talk to them and they all agreed that they would get $128,000 cash, I would pay for the closing costs and I would pay for the realtor. Cool, great, you know, she gave me the realtor contact and then I was going to email her the contract. The next day, it was actually Sunday, she texted me and she goes, actually, I want to wait because I'm trying to see if I can get another opportunity and I'll get back to you by Tuesday. In these cases, what I do or what I was taught to do is give the seller a type of rush on my contract. So the way to do that for me was given her an expiration date and I said okay that's great I understand you guys want to take your time and do what's best but my contract expires tomorrow by five and if you don't give me an answer by then I cannot guarantee the same price it could be lower and I, can, I cannot guarantee that I can close within two weeks so she said okay the next day they call me around 10 it was actually her agent and she goes you know what um, we want to go with you um, we like what you're given and blah 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 so we agreed to your terms I sent over the contract and nothing. No answer for, you know, they said they'll get right to signing it and no answer on the contract. So I thought that was a bit suspicious. So then I called back at the end of the day and they're like, oh, sorry, my client's just been really busy. Um, they're going to sign tomorrow morning for sure. Okay, so Friday or Tuesday, I give them another deadline and I say, if you don't sign by today by five, then my contract is not going to, you know, it's going to expire. 
So Tuesday again, nothing. So I called around too and I said, listen, what's going on? And she was like, oh yeah, she's beginning to it. Don't worry, I know about the deadline. We'll get to signing in as soon as she's out of work. So I'm like, okay, still a bit suspicious, sketchy. but yeah, it was a bit sketchy, sketchy. But you know, I guess I could have, I could have asked her. I guess that was like my learning lesson on this too. But you know, um, she just like she was very happy on the phone, so just saying that her client was busy with work. So I'm like, okay. And then at around 4:30, like half an hour before my contract signed. Um, expired. She called me and she said, sorry, we decided to go with someone else. And um, I was just like, what? Like, I thought we had this, but I asked her, I said, so what was the purchase price? And she goes, um, 128 after everything. I said, what do you mean? So what is the benefit of, you know, the other person that I'm not offering? And she goes, well, you're not paying for closing costs. And I said, of course I am. It's in the contract. I'm paying for your commission, for title, you know, insurance, all that stuff. It's all in there. And she goes, no, you said that was excluded. And I said, no, in the contract it says buyer will pay for closing costs and real estate agent. And in parentheses, it lists all the closing costs. And she goes, oh, I thought the parentheses me me meant that they were excluded. And I was just like, what? So that was pretty shattering and my heart hurt a little so bit. So we because lost the deal. That's the more the story yeah. and everything correct basically by the book and what she was taught. And they got the same price. Same price, but we lost the deal because of parentheses. Yeah, so I lost the deal because of parentheses. And I mean, when I was on the phone with the lady, I was like, why didn't you guys just ask? Like, I could have told you, like, I could explain, maybe we could have negotiated if that was the case. But they just didn't do any type of communication. And every time I called, they made it seem like everything was okay. So, I mean, but, uh, they just... But that's, that's, what, you, that's what you get. That's what you get when you have an agent involved. Um, right. They, will, they won't go to the towards the one that has a better relationship with the, the client. They yeah, they don't go care with the that. one that has the money up front and just want to get paid. Mm -hmm. So long. Um, yeah, and she got a bigger commission out of it, so obviously, you know, she wanted to benefit herself, sure. which, you know, understandable, I guess, on her side. But um, I guess three big lessons that I learned from this is one... If parentheses. Okay. No parentheses in the yes, contract. I guess try to be more specific and clearly specify everything out. Um, before sending over. The number two is um, if there is another agent involved or somebody like a third party that's doing kind of in-between negotiation, make sure you read the contract with them and the actual seller. Go through every single line and um, make sure that they understand everything and if they have any questions or anything like that, you know, it's it's solved within a phone call or, you know, face-to-face, -face, whatever that is because things like this can happen and um, you lose a deal like I did. And the third thing I guess on my part would be to maybe just try to ask more questions you know in those times of silence and just be like but is everything okay do you guys have the contract clear like is there any point that you guys are kind of doubting or thinking about it or you know just try to be more active when there's more silence on the other side so you know lessons to learn and I know I'm not gonna make those mistakes again. So um, it's a good learning for me and for whoever's watching this and might be in the same position. On uh, my side, the construction side, uh, we're doing well, as I mentioned before. And every market is a different opportunity. Yeah, for sure. So um, in that the Nashville area, um, there's a lot of people that focus on new construction. So that would that means that a lot of people that have older houses and just want to remodel their houses <laughs> are struggling to find contractors. And um, so that's where I come in, and that's where I um, basically Make my uh, make my mark in Nashville when it comes to older older houses. Focus now, yeah. but I am trying to get into new construction as well, and I'm al almost finished with my home inspection um, license. So I almost have that He's in got hand. Got his test coming out, so good luck to you. Yeah, I'm studying like I'm in college. Yeah. Not used to it. It's not fun, is it? But for now, I'm going back to the beach. Yes. I'm not gonna tell you what I'm gonna do on that beach, but I'm going back to the beach. So thank you guys for watching this episode. Stay tuned for some more information.